my garbage person of the week is uh, sometimes I need a photo to sort of encapsulate the person. So I've gotten this picture of Cruella de Vil. But what you need to understand is that it's not actually Cruella de Vil who's going in the trash. There's a good chance it might be you. Well, what do I mean about that? Well, um, I've been keeping a watch on dogs over the past few years. Uh, I always do. And during the pandemic, dogs were very much in the news initially. There were, uh, I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna walk you through a few months of headlines. There were concerns over dog fishing and abandoned pets. Dog fishing is where lots of people want dogs. The concern is when there's a lot of demand, they might be uh, given dogs that they may not like, which makes me mad because every dog deserves a home. Um, and also pets being abandoned because there was this economic catastrophe, maybe people get rid of their dogs. But the thing was, it actually turned out that lots of people were alone and wanted dogs. And so there was this puppy boom. And so there were concerns about smuggling and price gouging and dog napping. It even hit Lady Gaga of people stealing these dogs. And then we start to get further into the pandemic. And after the puppy boom, you have the puppy bust where lots of people realize that they either can't take or don't want the best creature ever on our planet. And so hundreds of lockdown puppies began to be resold or abandoned. This latest edition was brought to my attention in this video by the BBC. Let's watch a little bit. At the beginning of the pandemic, we absolutely saw a spike in people ready to adopt. They were off work or working from home or had lower schedules. And so they said, okay, this is the time to bring in a dog. But we, in the past couple of months, have definitely seen some more returns. Sometimes people, you know, also just don't really think through or understand how serious that commitment is of taking care of, of a life, whether that's a dog or a cat. And that stress is a little too much for them. And so they also return for that reason. And it's it's a big thing. There's reports of drastic increases in animals being abandoned in states like Alabama, Ohio, and Nevada. In the UK, hundreds of puppies that were purchased during the lockdown are now being disowned and sold. I love that they throw in that they're disowning them. Like, you're not my dog. That seems weird. Um, and look, a lot of a lot of teams we have the Houston SPCA uh, talking about um, the issues with abandonment. So look. If you have lost your job, if you've lost your resources, if you lost your home and you can't take care of an animal, I understand that. And I understand that some people are abandoning them because they can't give them the shelters because the shelters are already maxed out from lack of resources. But that is still a living animal who should not be abandoned on the street where it might be died or it might be killed or abused, might starve to death. And the idea that some people are just sort of like, Moving on, like they've gotten bored of it, like their other pandemic hobbies, like they're not interested in their sourdough starter. I don't use the typewriter I bought that much. The idea that you would treat a dog like that, Yasmin, that just kills me. And that's why you're in the garbage, not you individually, <laughs> but some of you in Houston and around the country and around the world, oh, no. you're a part of this puppy bust. That's so sad. I didn't know about that. that. That's really horrible. I almost got a puppy during the pandemic because now is the yeah. perfect time to do it. If you're gonna have a puppy, you can train it because you're home all the time. But I mean, that didn't happen. It's coming though. I feel like it's coming. So oh, really? But if well, you've got know, one, you're gonna keep it, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like who, how? I, don't, I can't even imagine giving it back. Yeah. No, no, I would never. Yeah. Especially because there's like no animal that's more there for you when you need it most. The idea that we would abandon them when we don't need them anymore, it just, oh God. It's heartbreaking. It's yeah, heartbreaking. It's, it's heartbreaking, it's selfish, it's so many things. It's mean. Exactly. Okay, now uh, those are our garbage people of the week. But what about your garbage people of the week? As always, we polled our audience and 28,000 of you voted in the poll this week. And here is our top five. Coming in at number five with 10% of the vote, Ron DeSantis for only allowing Fox and Friends to cover his bill signing and possibly violating the First Amendment. Coming in at number two with 13% of the vote, Caitlyn Jenner for her comments on trans athletes. Um, I would also throw in her comments about personal plane hangers and the homeless. There's just a lot of bad stuff coming out of that candidate. But anyway, coming in at number three with 20% of the vote, 
Ted Cruz for cozying up to the man who repeatedly insulted his fam. Hey, there's some overlap with you, Yasmin. That's always yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, coming in number two with 24% of the vote. Very close votes here. The Arizona GOP for wasting taxpayers' money to find bamboo votes. I only sort of know that reference. I know it's a part of their audit. They've lost their minds. But number one this week, garbage person of the week for the community with 32% of the vote, Joe Manchin for continuing to champion non existent bipartisanship. Joe Manchin, always a contender for the title and much deserve this week thanks to his interview with Chris Cuomo. So thank you to all of you, the 28,000 of you who voted, really do appreciate that. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.